Um, first concept of Roosevelt Island. Okay. Um, uh, immediately, Lou determined that there would be a monument at the end, a blunt end. It petered out. This was all spoil. I mean, it was just a heap of nothing at all, and it had to be built. I wanted to see a profile on, across the, and from Manhattan and such, instead of just this. So the mount was my idea. This remarkable site, which couldn't fail but be noticed. It was a great site, both in visiting it because of the view of the city, and then also the possible view across to a memorial from Manhattan and Queens. And of course, the bridge was in itself a great image too. So this had to be something strong. Lou made a drawing for me, um, a little sketch um, in which he drew a very tall obelisk. And then, and he wrote down five, five, five feet high. And then he drew this island area, five, five feet long. And he said, this has got to be as good as that. The obelisk was the Washington Monument. So then you knew what his ambition was that this had to be a horizontal monument, but it had to have a power that was as great as the Washington Monument. The bastion, the whole idea had to be thrown out, and that was in the middle of March, and by the end of April, we had to come up with something brand new that would be in sync. So the first thing that Lou did was to cut down the height of his 60-foot bastion, which was circular, and became a much smaller structure, which he called the room. And then we thought of having a group of trees as well, and then staircases on both sides that would lead up to the very top view down a great lawn. And then to have, instead of just one central walkway, we to have the aisle approach along both sides for a promenade. And so there were choices. One could simply walk or ride a bicycle or whatever along the promenade and rest and sit and look at the view. Or there was the avenue of trees. And these trees were to be, as Lou always felt and described them, to be sheltering, probably orchard size. And this was to be the processional and that you went through various experiences of the landscape. And he called it the garden and the room and thought of them together as one unit. This lawn was to be representative of the American countryside. And you can proceed in so many different ways along the promenade or under the alley of trees. And then suddenly you come out to a paved area, which is man-made. So you go through the continent. Space was realized through movement, not through construction, really. And it was an experience that took time. You were not just plumped in front of a figure statue to commemorate Roosevelt, but you were really confronted finally on your own. So it's the combination of nature and then this minimum of a room. And instead of confronting Roosevelt inside, he's outside. And when you get to the room, you're on your own. You're suddenly confronted with the river moving on. And so it's a place full of questions and the future. <laughs>